Hello, my name is Jay Song, and I'm a graduate of UCLA Orthodontic Program. For this How Would You Treat This Case series, I would like to share an interesting case that I treated at UCLA Orthodontic Program with my mentor, Dr. Jason Pear, who is a clinical instructor there. A 14 year, 9 month old Persian male presented to the orthodontic clinic. His chief complaint was, I like to get braces to improve my appearance. The patient shows dolicofacial pattern and a slightly increased lower facial height. The nasolabial angle was increased in this patient and profile was slightly convex due to the hyperdivergent pattern. The patient also had a tendency to keep his lips apart, although he had no difficulty with nasal breathing. No tongue habit was noticed or reported by the patient. Intraorally, the patient had class 1 molar relationship with 0.5 millimeters of negative overjet. Both the maxillary and mandibular incisors were retroclined, although the mandibular incisors were protruded. There was 2 millimeters of open bite in the anteriors and significant crowding on both arches. Something that needs to be noted in this case is that both maxilla and mandible were constricted. The patient reported that two years prior to the first visit, he had gone through an expander treatment that was not successful, only flaring out the teeth. The radiograph revealed that the maxillary laterals shown in the pictures were actually primary teeth, and they had almost no roots. You can see it from the panoramic radiograph, and it was clearly verified by periapical x-rays. The third molars were developing in all four quadrants, but the patient otherwise did not have any pathological findings on the panoramic view. On the lateral ceph tracing, the ANB of 4.5 shows a class 2 skeletal relationship, while the FMA and SN2MP show a hyperdivergent pattern. The upper incisors are retruded and retroclined, whereas the lower incisors are protruded. The IMPA indicates retroclined lower incisors partly due to the high angle skeletal pattern. Upper lip to E line shows flat upper lip. Different approaches of this case will be possible but for comparison, we can think of mainly two distinct treatment plans. The first option would be using SARP for the correction of maxillary constriction and surgically correcting the mandible with counterclockwise rotation. In order to limit the surgery to the mandible, we should maintain the upper lip support by creating implant spaces for the maxillary lateral incisors after extracting the primary teeth. Arch development must be used for alignment of the teeth without any more extractions. The second option would be using a microimplant expander known as MARP to correct the maxillary constriction. Maxillary primary lateral incisors will be extracted for canine substitution and the mandibular first premolars will be extracted for the removal of the crowding. The retraction of the mandibular anterior teeth will resolve the crowding and improve the overjet. Orthodontic extrusion of the upper incisors will be needed for achieving proper overbite, while the bite opening can be prevented by the intrusive force of the mandibular molars. After 23 months of treatment, these are the post-treatment results. If you are interested in how this case was treated, Please go to the PCSO Bulletin 2016 Fall Edition for more information. Thank you.